Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about where do I place treatment. We get questions like this all the time and my answer is always the same. It depends on usage. What you're going to do in the room really is the kind of the guidelines and the room dimensions and all that for, for the amount of treatment that you're going to put in the room. Remember our acronym TAP, type, amount, and position. What type of treatment are we going to use? How much are we going to use and where are we going to put it? Those are the three questions that we have to answer. We have two types of treatment, pressure and reflections. We have two types of problems that need certain treatments. Pressure treatment is different than reflections. Pressure is low frequency, reflections are middle and high frequencies, right? Okay, so we have to keep that balance in line because there's not one technology that works for both. You can't use low frequency absorbers to absorb high frequencies. You can't use high frequency absorbers to absorb low frequencies. So there's breakpoints in there where certain technologies, certain ways of doing things, ways of absorbing energy work for certain frequencies and you have to be cognizant of that. Low frequency management is always the four walls, floor and ceiling because those are the sound fields that are producing the problems. We have front wall to rear wall, side wall to side wall, floor to ceiling. So we have a lot of sound fields going on that we have to take care of. Most people forget about the floor to ceiling completely when it comes to pressure. And that's unfortunate because ceiling heights of eight, nine foot produce 60, 70, 80 cycle issues. And that's a horrible frequency to have, especially in a mix. Okay. That's the last thing you want. So let's look at some usages here. We have two channel theater and mix two channel for low frequency treatment, the four walls, you got to do that number one. That has to be done number one. Two channel floor or ceiling pressure for low frequency, that could be a phase two. Most people don't want to do this because it involves treating the ceiling or the floor. Floor is easy with a platform. Ceiling is much more difficult, especially with the weight of low frequency absorption. Okay. Two channel, we have the reflections on the four walls, floor and ceiling. So just like we have pressure, we have the reflections. Remember, pressure and reflections are our two things. So there's a hierarchy of treatment. Diffusion is kind of the last thing, front and rear, in a two-channel room. If you've got all of these other issues resolved and treated correctly, you can bring in diffusion. Diffusion will make your room sound larger. Okay. Theater. Four walls, low frequency. Got to. So much more energy than most of these rooms can contain anyway with theater. I don't know when quantity became quality or the perception of quality, but that's how it goes sometimes in, in these things. I guess that's the basis for the loudness wars in, in the recording world. So theater, we got the four walls, floor, ceiling. Then we got reflections, side, front walls. Diffusion in theaters, really rear wall and ceiling. Biggest benefit we found in the rooms that we've done. Placing diffusion on the ceiling, placing diffusion on the rear wall will open it up increase definition and resolution. So make the room sound larger. That's what you want with theaters, right? We want our small home theaters to sound like big theaters. Well, we want them to sound better because I've been in some of these big theaters, especially the ones in LA, and they sound horrible. High pressure levels, 120, 125 dB SPL. You can't hear anything. When there's an explosion, you can't hear the dialogue on the screen because the, the, the room loads from the low frequency energy and you can't hear the dialogue. So it's horrible, all right? Mixed rooms, low frequency, four walls, floor, ceiling, standard in all rooms because we've got those three sound fields, right? Okay. Then we need the reflections off the front and the side walls and the ceiling in mixed rooms. We have to be really careful with those because the time signatures of those reflections are, could be audible in our mix. And then diffusion on the rear wall. I work in a lot of the studios in Los Angeles and those that produce a really consistent quality product all the time have diffusion in the rear wall of their mix room. Some have two dimensional, some have one dimensional. Once again, those are dependent on the distances involved, which type that you use. So where do I place treatment? Follow type, amount, position, tap. What type are you gonna use after you identify either a pressure or a reflection issue? How, how much treatment? It's all about square footage when it comes to low frequency management and where you're gonna place it. Hope this helps, thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. 
We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.